Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Words Apart podcast. I am your host, Dion Sanchez, and joining me today is author Marcy Clark. Is that, is that how you? Yeah, Marcy Miles Clark. <laughs> Got it. Um, thank you for joining me today, Marcy. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So, Marcy, if you could get this ball rolling and tell my audience a bit about yourself and your book, that would be great. Sure. So I'm Marcy Miles Clark. I am a author as well as a healthpreneur. And we'll talk about that a little later. Um, I am a Philadelphia native, but I've been in Maryland now for almost 25 years. So that's my second home. And um, I love to uh, write and I like to speak and, you know, talk to others about you know, our experiences and what we're doing now really to be able to take our experiences and now help some others now that we're on the other side. Awesome. So your book, as it's awesomely displayed in the background, um, could you explain um, the meaning behind it, um, Praying Wife and Healed Husband? Obviously, faith is a fundamental component of that. Yes, our book is a faith-based book. Um, It's called Praying Wife, Healed Husband. And then the subtitle is How We Survived the Death-Defying COVID-19 Experience. And our book was birthed out of experience early on in the pandemic, back in March, uh, when there was just a lot of just unknowns and everything was just totally brand new. My husband and I both got sick with COVID. I ended up having a pretty mild case. My husband, on the other hand, ended up getting really deathly ill. He ended up on the ventilator at Johns Hopkins for over um, 28 days. And then he was hospitalized for a total of 46 days where he had to do some you know, serious rehabbing, um, intense rehab. And um, he was in a medically induced coma. And um, during that time period, they didn't know if he would live or die. Um, There was one time when he had three back-to-back death-defined episodes, and they actually allowed me and two other family members um, the opportunity to come visit him because they didn't think he was going to make it through the day. But God had another plan. Fast forward a year and a half later, and my husband has made a full recovery. And so we're extremely grateful um, we now have um, you know, vaccines, we're vaccine advocates. We also have now, you know, there's um, the monoclonal antibodies and the, the cocktails of remdesivir. There's a lot of different things that can a, keep you from getting COVID, but then if you get COVID, can keep you from getting as sick, but we didn't have that. And so we, um, you know, I started a prayer call um, when my husband was um, on his deathbed and a prayer group. And it ended up just being family and friends and ended up getting really big and just going international. And so um, at the end of his, we literally uh, prayed him back on his feet, literally just prayers and faith, because as I started to say, that he didn't have any of the, you know, vaccine, monoclonal antibodies or any of the helps, you know, that the remedies that they have now to be able to, you know, be able to fight the COVID battle. And so as my pastor would say, um, it was just his body and God. And so we did a lot of praying, fasting, and uh, my husband made a miraculous recovery. And so once he, um, he recovered, uh, or as he was recovering, we had a lot, a lot of interest in, his, in our story because it was so early on and he, we were both healthy and we traveled, we had a good life. And we were just like, you know, the picture of health and fun and all those good things. And people just never thought that it would happen to us. And so there was just a lot of interest in our story. My husband was Dean Johns Hopkins' sickest COVID, COVID patient um, because, like I said, he had so he had gotten so sick so quickly, and they didn't expect him to live. And then he ended up making a miraculous recovery. And so um, our local news stations actually recorded his um, release, and um, and we just had a lot of buzz and did a lot of interviews, and people were just asking us to tell our story. And so that's how I ended up writing the book. Um, because in, in um, the time when I was home alone while he was in the hospital, I was literally charting his progress. I was writing, you know, um, for sanity purposes and to stay organized. And so, you know, I was journaling in my own journal for my own mental health. I was also, um, you know, taking notes um, just, you know, to stay organized um, every time I would talk to his healthcare providers. And then I was also sending out texts and emails and things to my prayer group to communicate. So I had quite a bit of content 
And by the time that, you know, he started to recover and I got the idea to write a book, it wasn't really far-fetched because I had so much information. And so, you know, really what we ended up doing, Dion, was we told our story in a faith-based testimonial. Yes, it is a faith-based book. But we also took it a step further to say, now that we're on the other side, this is how we can help people. And so I share um, in the book a chapter called Good Resources. And um, I've also, um, you know, began to speak and help others to prepare, you know, for the unexpected as well. And I'm also in the process of, um, of writing my second book as well. Awesome. And tr you and your husband are absolute heroes in my eyes, truly. Um... I'm a Christian, so faith is a really fundamental part of my life as well. But to have to go through the virus, both of you and your husband possibly not survive and just have so much faith in God and Almighty and his power to keep you guys thriving and to continue living your life's purpose is truly inspiring and amazing. And I'm surprised I'm not in tears right now yeah. because this virus has truly affected everyone. And mm -hmm. we're like two years into it. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. many people don't have, have didn't survive it. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. You know, and that's really the, um, that's the spiritual side. You know, we talk about the spiritual side as well as the practical side of, you know, of surviving and, um, you know, the things that are necessary for both. And um, on the spiritual side of things, I mean, I just can't stress the importance of having faith, and, you know, more than anything. My bishop said recently that faith is what gets us through until, until God actually completes the job or something to that fact until, you know, we actually get on the other side. And every day, you know, we go through different things and we can't see, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel. And it's that faith that pulls us through. And I think that, um, you know, faith is more important now than ever. Um, just because, like you said, I mean, we're almost, you know, we're a year and a half or so into the pandemic. <clears throat> 700 and something thousand people have died. 700 and something thousand families have lost a family member. And then I, and countless other families have been affected by, you know, the pandemic, either mentally, physically, financially, emotionally, or all the above. And it's just a really tough time for people. You know, people are really just having a really hard time. And so, you know, our message really is twofold. Like I said, the importance of the spiritual part and the things you can do, faith and prayers and, you know, meditation. I talked about journaling as an outlet, relaxation. You know, there's so many different components, you know, to the spiritual part, but that's just, you know, kind of the name of few. And then on the other side, you know, there are practical resources that we can also put in place as well, you know, to be able to buffer us from these unexpected curveballs in life. Absolutely. And I can completely understand the uncertainty and unknown. Um, just to give you a little insight into me, um, I actually got diagnosed with diabetes at the start of the pandemic in 2020. Mm -hmm. And um, before I got diagnosed, I truly faced unknown and uncertainty of utter darkness, in my own opinion, because I was truly depressed because there was no concrete solution to what was happening to me. And I could have died at any given moment. I was basically a skeleton. Mm -hmm. um, my faith was really shaken. Um, mm -hmm. I knew God was doing something. I just didn't quite know what. And I also didn't know by the time his answer was revealed, if I was going to be around enough to find out. So um, Scary. eventually, obviously, his answer was through my diagnosis and basically resurrected me from the dead, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So I truly understand the immense magnitude of his love, especially in the midst of the darkness. And um, though this diagnosis was at the first in front of the pandemic 2020, um, he continued to help me acclimate to this new change in spite of this virus going around. So yes, I'm glad I was able to survive being diabetic during this season. Amen. To God be the glory because you definitely had some risk factors which could have made things significantly worse for your already challenging situation. So amen to that. Absolutely. So um, you said you're a vaccine advocate, which I'm vaccinated as well. So I'm- Amen to that. All the way. <laughs> um, 
what advice would you give those who are hesitant about the vaccine? Oh my goodness. Oh goodness. This is such a loaded question these days, you know, because my husband and I are just so frustrated right now with all the things that we're seeing out there. And again, our experience occurred so early on in the pandemic when we didn't have a vaccine, you know, my husband almost lost his life and he didn't have the ability to protect himself because it was so early on. And I feel like now we have the ability, we know, you know, firsthand again, 700 and something thousand people later, we know that this virus is no joke and that it really can kill people and that, that it works really fast and it can, you know, really change lives in a really short period of time. And so like anything, you know, like else, I, we just feel like, you know, for people who are willing to, to listen, you know, who are really, you know, there's kind of two different buckets. It's like the uninformed versus the misinformed. And what we found is that, you know, there are still some people who really truly just don't know, um, but they're really seeking to really get some good information. Those people we can help all day long. Um, the people who are truly misinformed, that's something, you know, totally different, you know. And for those folks, we say, for all of them, we say, make sure that, you know, you're getting your information from credible news sources, not the internet, not, you know, Facebook and social media, go to your doctors, you know, look at the credible media sources, the CBSs and the ABCs and the NBCs of the world. And I tell people, I'm like, we grew up on the news. Everyone grew up on the news. Somebody's mother, grandmother, father, somebody in the household watched the morning or the evening news with Peter Jennings or Barbara Walters or whoever. Good morning, America. And we got credible news. Now this generation, we have the internet and we don't, and social media, and we use that as our news site. And while those are totally entertaining, those are not the places where we want to get our information on how we make our sound decisions as it relates to our health. Right. And so, um, you know, we just can't stress enough again from, from, you know, two people whose lives were shaken early on at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, now you have an opportunity to protect yourself. You know, it's like anything else, you know, you wouldn't go into a fire without putting on some type of hazmat suit or being able, you know, to protect yourself. You just don't go jumping and walking into the fire. Well, this is definitely the fire that we're dealing with every day. We have masks, we have the vaccines, you know, those are our biggest first lines of defense, you know? And the biggest thing about, you know, really the vaccine is that everybody's tired. We all wanna get back to, you know, familiar to our new uh, normals. We like to travel, you know, we all want to, you know, be able to hang out with our friends without having to cover our faces. And really at this point, the mask and of course the vaccines are definitely the keys to being able to help us get back to those places. There's no way we can go back to concerts and being able to hang out with you know large groups of people and stuff if we're just continuing to spread this virus. And that's what we're doing if we're not vaccinating ourselves against it. You know, I have so many different things I can say about that. Um, another thing um, that I think that just makes perfect sense is. You know, just the fact that I hear so many different things about, I don't know what's in the vaccine. Well, you don't know what's in your food. Unless you're a farmer, you don't know what's in what you eat every day, but it doesn't stop you from eating, right? Because that's what you need to do to stay alive. Well, it's the same thing with the vaccine at this point. That's what we need to stay alive. Not to mention the fact that most of us grew up in public schools. If we went to public schools, we had to get vaccinated. Yeah. And we had to take what was called a whole panel, which is your MMR pan. I'm a pharmaceutical rep too by trade and also a licensed life and health insurance agent. So, you know, all these things kind of come together for me when I start talking about some of these things. But the MMR um, panel is the measles, the mumps, and rubella. And all of us had to take those in order to go to kindergarten to go to public school. Our parents didn't know what the heck was, was in those vaccines as well, but you know what they did? They took us to the doctors and we got our shots because they wanted us to go to school. That's what we did. It's just no different now. There's no different. You know, This is what we need to do in order to keep everyone safe. And so again, I can go on for days. There's a number of different things that I can say, but um, you know, there's different reasons for getting a vaccine, you know, for some people, it may be the fact that like for you, you have pre-existing conditions. So you wanted to protect yourself. Yeah. For somebody, they may, you know, 
they may feel like they're invincible there. When I was in my twenties, I probably felt invincible as well. As a matter of fact, I think about that often. And I'm like, you know, if I was in my twenties or early on or whatever, would I be feeling like some of these people? And the true answer is I probably would have, but I would have gotten a vaccine if I didn't believe that I needed it for myself. I was really close to my mother who was sick, who was chronically ill, and I had an older grandmother. And I would have done it to protect them, even if I didn't feel like I needed to do it for myself. People have children. The children are still unvaccinated, you know? And um, so the adults need to protect themselves against their unvaccinated children, against the unvaccinated children, keeping themselves from getting sick. And they also need to protect the unvaccinated children, you know? And so there's a whole lot of different reasons. Maybe it's travel, maybe it's work, you know, maybe you're an entrepreneur and literally you can't afford to get sick because if you get sick, there's a strong possibility you might not be able to work and it, this could affect your livelihood. My husband was off of work for six months. How many people can sustain themselves financially for six months if they were to become definitely ill? And that's what COVID can do to you or kill you. You know, in either case, it can really shake up your finances. So if that's a reason, then for some people, that may be a reason why you need to get it done. You know, there's a lot of different reasons. There's no one size fits all. There's different reasons for different people, you know, different strokes for different folks. But the bottom line is that if we really want to get, you know, to normal and get beyond this pandemic, it's going to be all in, you know, being vaccinated. And so um, those are just some of the things, you know, that I share as part of our, you know, vaccine advocacy slash testimonial for some of the reasons why you would want to get vaccinated at this point. Awesome. And I'm, again, all for the vaccine. Um, just to give you a little background, um, um, right before I got the first vaccine, because obviously there's two now, um, I was, um, a couple days ago, I was, well, it was months and months and months ago, but um, I was staying out with my niece and my sister at the pool. Um, my sister is a medical in the medical field, so she is exposed and contacted to numerous of people at a given time. She um, actually contracted the virus, and mm -hmm. I mean, she didn't develop the symptoms, thank goodness, but she was in close contact to me and my niece, so I mm -hmm. was at risk of possibly being exposed. So I hadn't been vaccinated yet. I'm freaking out. I'm mm -hmm. just praying, I'm crying, I'm emotional. I know she obviously sincerely feels bad. So I'm like Googling away because I've been looking up appointments nonstop, but mm -hmm. it's it's virus season. Every place is booked to get a vaccine. Mm -hmm. So God must have really understood my panic in the midst of this uncertainty just mm -hmm. to Go back to what we were discussing earlier. It's and I looked up an appointment and it was available the next day. I'm like, doop. Yes. <laughs> so I got um vaccinated um literally the next day after yes. I found out. And I mean, it's possible the virus could have been inside me, but it must have went on vacation so I can get vaccinated or something because right. That was the absolute blessing and a miracle because yeah. who knows what could have happened in those yeah. several hour span that I found out, so. Yeah, and you know what, Dion? at this point, you know, um, again, 700 something thousand lives later and, um, you know, a year and a half out, most of us know somebody at some point has either died or been, you know, majorly affected, impacted by, you know, the virus. So we know the significance of it. But yet, and still, many of us are really hesitant to protect ourselves from it. And my husband and I have a pretty, you know, short leash. You know, um, we don't have a lot of tolerance for nonsense. You don't go through what we've been through and then, you know, turn around and, you know, act like this never happened, you know. And so um, we really, we have a, what we call no vax, no visit policy. And so our circles are really, really small. We don't do any um, out, I mean, indoor venues. Um, or anything like that, you know, um, we don't do large gatherings, um, we do small gatherings, and they're usually amongst our trusted vaccinated friends. And um, again, you know, I'm hearing just too many stories. I was with my, uh, my, my doctor the other day, and she was telling me about a young lady who contracted COVID because they went out to celebrate and an engagement and ended up um, going to a concert and her and her husband who were unvaccinated got really sick. 
Um, I also heard, um, and she said that if it weren't for the fact, my doctor said if it weren't for the fact that this person was already healthy and, um, and young, she said they had to throw the, the book at her, like all the cocktails, you know, to keep her um, alive and well. And if it wasn't for the fact that she, you know, had a good baseline, that she, there's a strong possibility she wouldn't have made it. Um, I hear stories like that all the time. Thank God she did make it. And I pray that, you know, that now she's on the other side that she will see the importance of vaccination because there's two things to that story. It's like, it's one thing for you to choose not to get vaccinated, but it's something else for you to still be hanging out. Yeah. You know, it's like you're just keeping things going and it's irresponsible, you know, and I'm hearing way too much of that. The same with, um, I read recently about a Baltimore father of nine who died. Um, he contracted COVID he believes from, they believe from one of his school age children. If you have nine children, presumably, you're going to have a lot of exposure. Somebody at some point, you know, the kids are back in school. There's a strong possibility that you're going to have major exposure. That's the first person that, you know, should have been vaccinated. My heart breaks for his family. There are nine kids now without a father. There's a wife now who has to raise nine children on her own. And it's just so unbelievably unnecessary because again, going back to, you know, a year and a half, March of 2020, when my husband and I first got sick and we didn't have the opportunity to protect ourselves, these people have that opportunity to protect themselves and they're not, you know, and it's just so sad. It's so sad, but it's so unnecessary at this point. Absolutely. Yeah. Ooh, I'm just. So here's my message, Dion. Here's my summary. Yes. Mask up and vax up. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yes. I mean, Back being vaccinated could save a life, truly. Yes, yes. And one of those could be your own life, right? Most importantly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, Marcy, I would like us to get to this icebreaker portion. I'm enjoying our conversation so much. Um, so I'll start with the icebreaker question. I feel like you're going to be really good with this question. Okay. Because <laughs> you're an author. <laughs> Um, if you had to come up with a title for where your life is at right now, at this precise moment, what would it be? Oh, wow. I had to come up with a title. I would say, you know, I'm, I'm approaching that 50 mark and I feel like half my life is over and I got hopefully another, you know, close to 50 in front of me. So I think that, um, I don't know. I have something kind of going on right now where I'm just feeling like, you know what? I am who I am. You know, God is showing me my purpose more and more every day. And so I think for me, you know, my title will be something around the uh, just um, emphatically me or something like that or unapologetically me. Yeah, I like that. That is a wonderful title. <laughs> so um, my title, um, I already shared a bit of myself through my diabetes, but I mm -hmm. went through a myriad of problems um, growing up. But um, so pretty much my title for where my life is at right now would be a warrior for change. Okay. Um, okay. I've gone through quite a lot of health issues. Um, yes. Diabetes was just one little tidbit on that road, yes. but um, I'm still here and it's made me into who I am. So yes. I feel like being a warrior really represents where I am right now and mm -hmm. who I am right now, especially since God placed it on my heart when I got mm -hmm. diagnosed. So um, mm -hmm. it all encompasses where I am and who I continue to be. Yes, I love that. I love that. Warriors are good. We need warriors. Matter of fact, speaking of warriors, we have a whole a squad of prayer warriors that were actually responsible for helping me, the praying wife, to pray my husband, you know, through his um, ordeal. So warriors are good. And you definitely want to surround yourself with like warriors as well. Absolutely. So, yep. Thank you. Yep. So on to the icebreaker game. It's lots of fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I thought that was the icebreaker. <laughs> well, that's the icebreaker question. I do have an icebreaker oh, game. Okay. It just, it's, it's a hoot and giggles and just livens up the mood a bit. So gotcha, gotcha. The game is called Song Association. You don't have to be an avid singer for the record. <laughs> okay. My husband's in the background too, healed husband. Healed husband, listen up. I might need your help on this one. He's a DJ, so he's got the songs handled. <laughs> 
Okay, <laughs> so um, pretty much how the game works um, is I give you a word and you have 15 seconds. Uh-oh. Yeah. I'm being timed here. Yes, you have no pressure. Time is not a luxury, unfortunately. You have 15 seconds based off of the word I give you to come up with a song pertaining to that word or it's in the lyrics. So you have a okay. Movie. If it's in the lyrics, it's okay. <laughs> okay, this is like um, a little combination of like Family Feud and um, what's the one that Jamie Foxx does? Shazam. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Family Feud meets Shazam. Okay, so, go for it. Um, it's lots of fun. Okay. It's only, it's it's only three good. words, so it's not like a 24 hour thing. So okay. let me start the timer. So the first word is, oh, let me, okay. The first word is heart. My achy, breaky heart. My achy, breaky heart. <laughs> that was quick. Uh, this is fun already. Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. It's an iconic song. Yeah. <laughs> Unbreak My Heart, Tony Braxton. Uh, we can go on and on. The Heart. Yeah. Okay. I didn't think of Tony Braxton's song. I did not think of that. See, you're doing good. So the next word is words. Words. Word up. <laughs> Does that count? Wow. <laughs> words. Um, words. Does it, word up doesn't count. It has to be an S. Words can't express the way I feel. Emotions for you are so real. I know that wasn't a part of the song, but that's I like. And that's my favorite all-time jam by Guy. I don't know if you millennials don't know nothing about that. That's the 40 and over thing. Well, my dad has much music knowledge. I'm sure I would have heard it at some point. But um, your, your dad knows Guy. <laughs> I per, I'm going to give you that one. I'm pretty <laughs> certain word of it is an actual song. <laughs> I just don't know who sings it, but I'm fairly certain. I, I believe you. I don't believe I you. I guarantee you. I believe you. I know every word in that song. I guarantee you. So the next one, woo, see the last word I've changed so many times, but I feel really strongly that you're going to nail this one. <laughs> so the last word is faith. Um, I should definitely know this. Um, and this is a song, Faith. Oh my goodness. Um, you've been, this is Eddie Jones. You've been so faithful, even though sometimes you didn't do what it wanted you to do, even though I didn't say what you wanted me to say. Faith. Woohoo! You got all three. I think that's yeah. a first. Someone getting all yeah. three. And that's a gospel song. Yep. Yeah. One of my <laughs> gospel favorites. See, it was fun. It was. That was fun. All the podcasts I've done, I haven't had anybody do an icebreaker. And I definitely didn't have anybody make me sing, break out a song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. Awesome. So we can keep singing awesome songs all day long. I can come up with new words or made up words, but... Yeah. We're at the end of this awesome conversation, unfortunately. I wish it didn't yes. have to end, but it does. Um, Marcy, do you have any social media links where people can find your book? Are you going to create a movie in the future? Give us the inside scoop to how my audience can get in touch with you. You know what? No plans for movies. My husband's sitting there saying, yeah, Denzel's going to play him. No, babe, I got you pegged to be, um, you're Boris. He's Boris. If I like the same complexion, bald head, he's Boris. And um, yeah, we thought about this and I have a niece who acts, so she would be me. Um, or, you know, I would maybe do like um, Regina. Regina Hall could be me, somebody like that. We don't have any plans, seriously, though, um, for a movie, but, you know, yeah. We definitely wouldn't turn down that opportunity, but uh, we have a website. It's praying, P-R-A-Y-I-N-G, wife helps, plural, H-E-L-P-S, prayingwifehelps.com. 
On our website, it just gives you, you know, pictures. It takes you through our testimony. You can also purchase the book there. You can also purchase it online at Amazon, as well as Barnes and Nobles and any online retailers. For social media, we're pretty easy to find. Um, again, you can always Google Praying Wife Healed Husband. Um, and then all of our social media tags, Facebook, Instagram, um, are basically Praying Wife, at Praying Wife Helps. And so you should be able to find us on those places as well. And so if you like some of the things that we talked about today, please follow us. Um, it's really important, you know, for us to, um, to have support. If people, you know, want to hear more about those things. We really encourage you to follow us. Um, we're also talking about, you know, how to position uh, yourselves for life's unexpected curveball. So we would love for you to stay in touch with us. Um, as we continue on this journey and that uh, we you know, continue to provide information that helped us get through um, to you all. So please, um, you know, follow us and keep in touch. Awesome, Margie. Thank you again for sharing your miraculous story on my podcast. I remember when you inevitably pitched me, because I get a lot of responses and your story just stood out to me so much. It just wow and I got so emotional I almost made a Facebook size about but like no let me wait till I do the actual episode hey, and go for it. just go for thank it. you so so much for being on my podcast today truly thank you so much for having us keep in touch Dion <laughs> well do to all my listeners thank you for joining us on the latest episode of the words of art podcast if you like this episode if you enjoyed it please feel free to follow on the following platforms. We are on Facebook at the Words of Heart Podcast. We are also on YouTube. And of course, wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple, Spotify, and Google. Tweet, subscribe, send it to the moon. If you can send it to the moon, let me know because that would be cool to have this podcast reach out other regions of the galaxy. However you choose to um, resonate or respond to this episode, please let me know. Um, feel free to let me know through Twitter and Instagram as well. I'm Instagram HeartWarrior25 and Twitter at HeartWarrior24. Again, stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you again for joining me, Marcy Miles Clark. And until next time, bye.